Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Tuesday, it looks like the 24th of January. After the Monday, um, where we showed some hubris. Um, we showed a cavalier attitude. And sure, as sure, as sure, if there's any sure thing about trading, and you can hear it in my voice if you listened to the recording yesterday, how fucking smug I was um, about Euro hire. We were long at the open yesterday, um, 108.70, trading up the figure, um, smug, smug, smug like a rug, smug like a slug, you know, like classic Greek tragic shit, right? Um, we printed the 28 high. And sure, we traded as we were prone to do, um, 109.27 the high. Um, we were trading it a bit, and but just comfortably long, right? So now our average is you know, 108.20. Just thinking like we're going to buy some dips on this, and we're going to just, you know... Ride out into the sunset with a big, big winner. Uh, and of course, what happens? Euro just goes left all day. Um, and now we're left with one of these fucking indecision bars again. Very similar to the last. Uh, very similar to Wednesday the 18th, right? So you have a big tail, opened where it closed, indecision. So now the resolution of this is 109.27 top side or 108.45 the downside we walked in this morning um, squared our euros here that might be the kiss of death I don't know um, but we were thinking about we were up early thinking about this bar thinking about the price action in euro yesterday um, I don't know um, Will I regret selling 108.81s? There's nothing really to regret, right? We'll be long again if it gets through 109.27. Um, that will be very important if we can break up through there. I, I can't, I don't know how we're going to do that today. We do have some sterling numbers out. Um, but we'll have to see. So. There's a lot of chart points to look at today, so let's just take it slow. Obviously, we just talked about two of them here. Um, how we can resolve this bar here. Um, 108.45 below. 109.27 high. Let's look at some of these other charts. Um, equities, riding. Riding dirty. Um... 40 55 the high we think this is going to run out of steam up here um obviously it gets totally out of hand at 4109 today um i don't think we're going to put another uh, 60 handles into this but surely we could put another 30 handles into it so um, but once we get up towards 40, 90, we're going to start trading aggressively to the short side. Just because it's a little bit stretched. Um, and it's not like we're in a clear sailing situation. Rates. I'm going to try and buy. I mean, we we'll sell high ones in, in futures. So buy the dip in rates. We talked about trying to get get this stuff between 345 and 335 um, no luck yesterday we traded up to 55 now we're at 51 52 um, we'll see if this thing eases lower Aussies bid um, which is a reflection of the stock market not sure what to do with Aussie uh, we do remember the Wednesday bar last week uh, we were short Aussie. 63 was the high. Uh, could we get a double top up here? Could we revisit this? I don't know. There's nothing really to do with Aussie today. Sterling, there is shit to do, right? We got PMI today. We have this massive double top. Again, Cavalier yesterday. Cable was at uh, 
124.20. And I was like, you know, the, it's such an obvious break trade, 124.46. Uh, it is an obvious break trade. Uh, it still is an obvious break trade. But then, like, I just dismissed it and said, well, uh, you know, now there's this, um, you know, is could this possibly trade down through 118.30 and this would be the best double top of all time? And then I just completely dismissed that as like fucking nonsense. Uh, and we proceeded to go straight, straight lower. Um, so, again, note to self, right? There's a lot of indicators. And if you listen to me every day, you'll, you, you'll, you'll see patterns in how I trade and how when I'm trading well and when I'm trading poorly. It's not that I was trading poorly yesterday. <clears throat> Is that my attitude and mentality towards trading was cavalier. Uh, and, and arrogant and trading will humble you so fast um, and I don't want to over dramatize it or anything like it wasn't like I mean I did I guess leave some P&L on the table uh, surely I would have made a lot more money if we closed at 109.50 in euro uh, but just a note for myself uh, about fucking arrogance uh, I've read the fucking Greeks. Uh, I should know better. Anyway, uh, Euro Swiss. We're just picking this up on dips. Yesterday we got a few few chances. We got them at ninety five. Um, we got them at oh two. We got them at oh eight. Uh, and we're just selling them on little twenty pip clips. Uh, Euro Swiss looks like it has to go higher. Um, just the trading of it and beyond this sort of helter skelter up to up to 101 back down to 9875 we're back in this like this is just slowly going higher so try and pick up low ones in euro swiss uh, if you feel like it gold uh, we're at here now one two triple top quadruple top tippity top um, is this going to break out? We probably need uh, rates lower for this, or we need euro through 109.27 for this. Um, don't feel super comfortable buying gold on a break here. Far more comfortable with euro, because uh, <clears throat> there, there are plenty of people who are short euro. There aren't many people who are short gold, people who are long gold. Uh, so I don't think it's going to break to the top side the way we like to have break trades play out. Here's a chart that's kind of interesting. Aussie Yen. This was the epic bar from Wednesday. Everyone was talking about it. Ooh, Aussie Yen bar. And we talked about how fucking dodgy these bars are, right? So if you sold this through the lows, Thursday looked pretty good but you had to leave your stop up here 91.90 and now um you know have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight this looks like a break trade now uh i don't know what's going to drive aussie yen i don't even know how aussie yen works anymore dollar yen it's doing its own thing uh aussie is risk on risk off but um you can just do a close your eyes uh, break trade here at 9190. And if you get your little kick through the level, you know, keep it tight. Uh, and then if you don't, you know, don't marry this thing. But there will be stops here. There will be stops at 9201. Uh, the Hopers, um, it's bad enough they had to leave a 200 point stop but they're going to attack on another 11 or 12 points so it's through 92 cents or 92 yen um, keep an eye on this dollar yen could easily drive this right you know dollar yen goes freaking haywire maybe rates go higher uh, I, I don't know how dollar yen is going to go haywire today but uh, it's an interesting chart and one of the reasons it's also interesting is all of the yen crosses are set up like this here's kiwi yen same thing 84.90 Here's sterling yen. <clears throat> um, 
Uh, sterling yen could be PMI driven. It'd be hard to trade, of course, uh, but could be PMI driven. What else do we have? Oh, we have this this asinine one. Uh, we were looking at this all last week. Totally did not really pay. Didn't cost us anything, but didn't pay. But this looks like uh, just a technical pattern. We want to try and trade this. This 240 line comes in around 70, but more importantly, uh, price action up through 679.50 should lead to um, quite a few higher highs. And now let's just use our tepid imaginations. How is this going to happen? So if Euro um, is resolving through the lows, dollar China is obviously going to be higher. Um, and maybe you don't feel like selling Euro. Um, you have a secret, you know, smutty love affair with, um, imaginary love affair with, uh, Christine. Don't like selling that shit. I totally get it. Um, buy dollar China, right? Who doesn't like fucking selling China? It's like so fun. Um, anyway, uh, 679.50. Dollar Mex. This is a pickup on a low one. We haven't traded dollar max in at like forever. Um, but we talked about this powerful bar here from the 18th. A lot of these 18th bars uh, are being resolved or whatever. Uh, dollar max is not going to be resolved. This is a dip first time to 1867. 13 big figures. Why are we even talking about it? Ethereum. Hanging. Hanging tight. Um, man, those dips that we were supposed to buy, that shit did not happen. Um, say la vie. You know what we did yesterday? We bought Nat Gas. Where the fuck is Nat Gas? Um, anyway, check Nat Gas. Uh, we have snow here in um i guess this is net gas yeah 344 yeah um we have snow and coldness here in europe now so everyone all the snow people are happy uh some epic skiing this weekend um but this is now it looks like it's come too far right so we're buying low ones in that gas with the idea that sort of three bucks is going to hold um Winter is now here. This whole like mystery uh, global warming summery winter, which has been happening, is now it does seem to be over. So even just psychologically, anecdotally, we think that gas could raise um, raise a bit. We saw this big gap from the absolute low yesterday. We we were buying low ones, three three threes, three two fives. Um, we're going to do the same today. It's not like we own Nat Gas price action. In fact, this is like I haven't traded Nat Gas in probably 15 years. So buyer beware. Um, and because of that, we're keeping it light. It's just kind of a fun one. It's kind of like that coffee chart I asked about the other day. Coffee was just too low. And so I was like, we should buy some of this fucking coffee. We drink a lot of coffee. Fuck it. Um, Nat Gas. Something to look at if you're one of these, uh, you know, I don't know, mean reversion types. This is a mean reversion type trade. Anyway, uh, a lot to look at today. We're looking both sides. Um, Euro will guide us. 109.27, um, These are the key points. Try and sell high ones in... Um, 10 year, 10 US 10 years, uh, try and buy low ones in that gas. And we're looking at this Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, Sterling yen. And then, of course, keeping an eye on cable because um, we have some cable numbers today. PMI in cable today. So there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot going on. Oops, connect. Uh, let's just be ready for it. What do we have? Uh, 
Yeah, PMI 1030 today. And then also we have US PMI also uh, 345 Swiss time. So a couple of things. Some French shit as well, French and German PMI. We got a, we got a couple of things going on here. So it, it should be it pro should prove to be a busy morning. Um, got plenty of time to get ready now at 6 a.m. Uh, UK time, 7 a.m. Swiss time. I've said a lot today, uh, a lot of things to keep your eye on. Nothing really to steeply sink your teeth into right now. Uh, our currency book is square. Um, we're short a couple of tens, uh, nothing, nothing to write home about. Um, but we're coming in wide-eyed and ready to look both ways in FX today. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.